You were with him on the day of his birth and on the day of his death. You gave him a good life, a wonderful family. He loved them deeply, and they loved him deeply in return. You walked with him in good times and hard times. You were with him even on this dark Friday. Today in our hearts, in our taking hearts, in the smiles that the memories bring, as we grieve and remember Jesus, be with us now. Amen. Cindy. Let's read scripture from Psalm chapter 69. Save me, O God, for the floodwaters are up to my neck. Deeper and deeper I sink into the mire, and I can't find a foothold. I am in deep water, and the floods overwhelm me. I am exhausted from crying for help. My throat is parched. My eyes are swollen with weeping, waiting for my God to help me. Those who hate me without cause outnumber the hairs on my head. Many enemies try to destroy me with lies, demanding that I give back what I didn't steal. 
God, you know how foolish I am. My sins cannot be hidden from you. Don't let those who trust in you be ashamed because of me. O sovereign Lord of heaven's armies, don't let me cause them to be humiliated, O God of Israel, for I endure insult for your sake. Humiliation is written all over my face. Even my own brothers pretend they don't know me, and they treat me like a stranger. Passion for your house has consumed me, and the insults of those who insult you have fallen on me. When I weep and fast, they scoff at me, and when I dress in burlap to show sorrow, they make fun of me. I am the favorite topic of town gossip, and all the drunks sing about me. But I keep praying to you, O Lord, hoping this time you will show me favor. In your unfailing love, O God, answer my prayer with sure salvation. Rescue me from the mud. Don't let me sink any deeper. Save me from those who hate me and pull me from these deep waters. Don't let the floods overwhelm me or the deep waters swallow me or the pit of death devour me. Answer my prayers, O Lord, for your unfailing love is wonderful. Take care of me, for your mercy is so plentiful. Don't hide from your servant. Answer me quickly, for I am in deep trouble. Come and redeem me. Free me from my enemies. You know of my shame, scorn, and disgrace. You see all that my enemies are doing. Their insults have broken my heart and I am in despair. If only one person would show some pity, if only one would turn and comfort me, but instead they give me poison for food and they offer me sour wine for my thirst. Thanks be to God.
Who has believed our message, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and familiar with suffering. Like one from whom men hide their faces. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he took up our infirmities and he carried our sorrows. Yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him and by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment, he was taken away. And who can speak of his descendants? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people, he was stricken. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, though he had done no violence, nor was there any deceit in his mouth. What a day to be together. What a day to remember and celebrate and grieve and learn from the things that we've experienced over the last number of years. But let me tell you a little bit about Jesus. Jesus was born to Mary and Joseph of Nazareth while they were sojourning in Bethlehem together. That was during Herod's tax great taxation. His parents lived in Egypt for a number of years when he was a small boy and moving the family back to Nazareth so Jesus could grow up among his extended family. A highlight of his childhood was a family trip to Jerusalem for Passover when he was around 12 years old. Jesus decided that he wasn't ready to go home but he forgot to inform his parents. Any of you ever had a moment like that? Who only discovered that he wasn't with the return caravan when they were many miles from the city. His parents never let him forget that. Maybe in response to that experience, he lived a very quiet life, never straying far from home until he was in his 30s. While Jesus never married, he was very involved in the lives of his extended family, their children and the family carpentry business. Jesus was a big support for his mother Mary in her grief after his father's passing. And when Jesus was in his early 30s, a visit with his cousin John changed the course of his life. 
After this visit, he left Nazareth to lead an unsettled life, never having a home of his own again. He became a big traveler, passing through Galilee and Judea, even into Samaria and beyond to the Jordan. His family hoped that he'd get over his traveling bug and settle down and raise a family, but that was not to be. Jesus was a person with a special light, a light from God, like the prophets of old, the rich and the poor alike. With his insight and wisdom, he was a powerful speaker. He enthralled them all. He spoke to us of great compassion of God and that we too should have love for one another. He challenged our thinking. And in the course of Jesus' travels, he came to have 12 special friends who he called his disciples, as well as numerous followers, male and female, who generously provided for his needs out of their own resources. Jesus was the type of person who was always having interesting encounters with people. If you tried to write down everything he did, the world could not contain the stories. He could make friends with anyone, tax collectors, people possessed by demons, the educated, the rich, people who were blind or lame, lepers, Pharisees, Samaritans. Jesus was interested in everyone. He was the kindest man, the most loving man, a person who had special powers given to him by God. And those of you here who have seen the power of his miracles know what I'm talking about. In the final years of his life, Jesus became famous. Thousands flocked to hear him speak. Some believed he was the Messiah, the chosen one of Israel. And while he was deeply loved, he also had some bitter enemies, people who were threatened by his sometimes biting honesty. He became so famous, he attracted the attention of religious and political leaders, and they plotted to kill him. One of his own disciples, who we will not name today, God have mercy on his soul, uh, betrayed him. Jesus was arrested, tried before Pontius Pilate. Up to the end, there were some among us who hoped for a display of God's power. That Jesus would begin to speak and amaze all who heard him, and as he'd amazed us so many times before, but he didn't open his mouth. And those who saw him in his final hours described someone who was resolute in his faith, still talking to God even as he was executed by crucifixion, as a common criminal. And he died just outside the city of Jerusalem, the city he loved, on the Friday before Passover left to grieve his passing are his mother Mary, his brother James, various in-laws, his Aunt Mary, wife of Clopas, many cousins, nieces, and nephews, his 11 special followers, and innumerable friends. He was predeceased by his father Joseph and his cousin John, the baptizer. While Jesus had no children of his own and never made very much money, or bought any land of his own, he left a mark that will never be forgotten. He will be remembered forever in the hearts of those who love him. to the garden alone while the dew is still Talked with me, and he 
of some words that Jesus shared that just before, during the week, the space that we need to remember. This is my commandment. Love each other in the same way that I have loved you. There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friend. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you slaves because a master doesn't confide in his slaves. Now you are my friends since I have told you everything the Father told me. You didn't choose me. I chose you. I appointed you to go and produce lasting fruit so that the Father will give you whatever you ask for using my name. This is my command. Love each other. We have a couple of special tributes. Um, So Peter, if you would like to come and share on behalf of the disciples. Thank you everyone for coming. My name is Peter. I didn't want to get up to do this tribute, but the other disciples said I must, I had to, and so I'm speaking for all of them too. We got to know Jesus around the same time, around three years ago when he had just started his traveling years. What do you say about a stranger who tells you to leave your family in your home, in your career, and go with them? What do you say about someone who asks you to do that and you do it? He was the kind of person you listened to. You listened to him from a deep place inside yourself. 
It was like he had the words of life and wanted you to listen. Or as my young friend John says, it was like he was the word. The word of life. And you wanted to listen to him forever. And we listened and we listened, but I can't say I, I understood everything he said. Although God knows I tried. Jesus was very patient, listening to our questions. After he'd been teaching the crowds, we'd get him aside and ask him what he really meant. And he would explain it all again. He had that kind of patience. I'm a fisherman by trade, and anyone who knows me will tell you that I can work hard. But I didn't have half the energy that Jesus had. We'd walk all day, Jesus would preach half the night to people, and we could hardly hold our eyes open. Finally, we'd get to bed somewhere, and in the morning we'd wake up and Jesus was long gone. He was out on the hills praying half the night. He got energy just from being with God. There was a power about Jesus that I've never seen in any other man, alive or dead. He spoke from a place of power, and he could change things with his word, with his touch. He spoke with power to those with sicknesses. He healed the blind, the lame. He could speak to demons, and they could obey him. And I know some of you may find this hard to believe, but he could speak to the wind and to the storm, and they would obey him. He spoke to a dead man and called him back to life. It may sound unbelievable, but he saw, we saw it with our own eyes. This is the kind of man he was. Sometimes unreasonable, sometimes angry, irritable, what have you. But Jesus was always there encouraging us. And we came to see, all of us, his disciples, we came to see that he wasn't just any ordinary person or even any ordinary prophet. But we came to see that he was the Messiah, the chosen one of Israel. Last Sabbath, when we entered into Jerusalem and the whole city was out singing his praises, we thought this is his time, his time had come, and that we would see him seated in his rightful place. What happened next has bewildered all of us that we have no words to describe our horror, our grief. It was unth unthinkable, and yet it happened. I still don't know how to say or what to do. There are things I would wish undone and things I did not do that I wish I could do. But what is done is done. We know now that Jesus is buried behind a stone a foot thick. No one can hurt him now, which is about the only comfort we have had in this dark time. I can only say today that Jesus was a savior to me. He showed me the way to live, and I will never forget it. Me and my friends are heading back to Capernaum shortly after this, but we are not heading back as the same people who left three years ago. Jesus has changed us. If there was one thing Jesus would want, it would be that we should love one, one another and take care of each other in our grief. Mary, I know how hard it was for you to give up your son Jesus to his traveling life. He missed that life too. But he did what he was called to do, and I know you knew from the beginning that he had a special calling, a special life. And I'm glad to see that John is taking care of you now. I just ask that for all of us, as we go from here, we not just go our own way, but that we look out for each other, that we love one another as he loved us. Knowing I'm a 
sinful man covered by the blood of the Lamb. And now I found the greatest love of all he is mine since you laid down your life. The greatest sacrifice Majesty Majesty Your grace has found me just as I am Empty handed but Forgiven so that I can forgive Here I stand Knowing that I'm your desire Sanctified by glory and fire greatest love of all he is mine since you laid down your life the greatest sacrifice I remember the first time that I met Jesus. I had been lost for some years, possessed by demons. I was not myself. I could hardly recall that time. But my first clear memory was of a man holding my hand and calling me by my name. I looked into his eyes and felt such love and acceptance. He just radiated that kind of love. After that, I just faltered along with a number of other women. 
He had started his tour of Israel then. We followed Jesus as a teacher. Excuse me, sorry. As a teacher from place to place. Jesus is someone who loved people. He loved to meet people. He loved to hear their stories. He loved to help them whenever he could. And people flocked to him to see him. They couldn't get enough of him. Sometimes we would travel ahead to the place that he was going and let people know he was on their way. Crowds of people would gather to come and see him, bringing along their sick, their lame, and they, Jesus would heal them, and then he would teach them. I remember once when Jesus was on the hillside and he told us how we were all blessed by God as the poor, as the, those who mourn, who those who are hungry, and those who long for peace. His heart went out to the crowd and to us. We know he spoke with the authority of God. When we were hungry, he could feel our hunger, and he would feed us. And then he would feed our spirits. He would teach us. He would always anticipate our needs. He showed us that God cared about everyone, not just the rich, not the well-educated or the powerful, but everyone. We had traveled across the sea to the place of the Gadarenes, and there there was a man who was clearly out of his mind. Peter and the other men who were rowing the boat tried to steer away from him, but Jesus said, no, that's where we're headed. We're going to land right in front of him. Jesus was the one who was eager to get off the boat and went to the man and spoke to him. We stayed there. We stayed where we were in the boats. A few minutes later, Jesus had the man clothed and seated and listening to him in his right mind and everything, to everything Jesus had to say. Another time, there was a woman who had been caught in adultery. She was brought before Jesus by the authorities. She was a test. She wanted, they wanted to see what Jesus was going to say about her. I can still picture it. The woman in a heap on the ground. Obviously, she had broken the law. And the men, righteous and angry, had stones in their hands, and they were just waiting for the word from Jesus on what to do. Jesus just laid, sat on the ground and started drawing in the sand. And he spoke, he said, those without sin can throw the first stone. Hmm. Starting with the oldest, they dropped their rocks and turned away. Jesus was left sitting on the ground with the woman, I can still see her face. She looked up from the gown and saw that there was no one there to accuse her. She looked into Jesus' face. I know what she saw. He told her to go in peace and sin no more. He taught us about the kingdom and how we were all part of it, how we were part of a kingdom coming. Just a few weeks ago, Jesus was invited to the home of the Pharisees and a woman came in. People knew her by reputation, she was obviously an unfortunate woman. Sorry. She had taken all her money and put it into this perfume in an alabaster jar. And she broke the flask and poured it over Jesus' feet and then continued to wipe it with her hair. I can still remember the fragrance as it filled the house. Some protested, thinking that was such a waste of money. And I still remember Jesus' words. He said that she was anointing him for his burial. At this time, we didn't know what she meant. But now, we can see what was coming. The whole time we were heading to Jerusalem, he knew how it was going to end. I can't really find the words to, it, to, say what I, to say what Jesus means to me. I left everything to follow him. I believed he was the chosen of God. We followed him right to the end. We saw his death that Pilate had given him. The death that no man should suffer, less, let alone a man that was so pure and guiltless as Jesus. It's a cruel world we live in. We are born into suffering, and Jesus himself tasted it all. Now we are here to bear his suffering, his grief. I don't know how we will go on without him. I would give anything to see him again. I would fall at his feet and tell him what he meant to me. But now that chance is gone. It seems like the world has gone dark. What I try to do now is put one foot in front of the other and try to remember what Jesus taught us. 
Remember how he walked, remember how he lived, and the way I want to live. God give us strength to not forget Jesus of Nazarene, and may God's peace be with him. Thank you, Mary. What do you say at a moment like this? There are times when we wonder what just happened. But stuck in my mind were three crosses. It wasn't just Jesus. There were two men on either side. They had very different reactions to Jesus. Is there the reaction of please forgive me today I want to be with you in paradise? Or he really wasn't who he said he was after all. Somehow I can't believe that even though we stand at a moment looking very different than we imagined. This is a moment where I also remember the words that he spoke to his disciples. He'd taken a place and he'd prepared it for them. He told his disciples to go on ahead that they would be celebrating a meal together. A meal that included one who betrayed him. And still, Out of the love of his heart, he served that man too. He didn't make distinctions. He didn't change the rules because we didn't get it right. He was there to love us, to do something incredible that would change our hearts even when it didn't make sense. There are days that life doesn't make sense I suspect every time we see a funeral of someone way too young, life doesn't make sense. We want to all live to old age, to know that we've lived a life, a life that let us see so many adventures and things. And yet Jesus, for some reason, chose to die young. Sometimes I wonder if his words (laughs) didn't mess with the system a little bit and maybe create some of the angst, some of the moments of hatred because he was so pushing back against what was the norm of the religious leaders. But I'm also amazed that in the middle of having this meal with his disciples that night, not only did he wash their feet, which I'm sure (laughs) totally confused them, he did something else. And in the middle of that meal, he stood up and he said, tonight is going to look different than you imagined. The story that you're headed into is going to be different than you're dreaming of. And I'm not going to give you all the details, but I want to do something that will remind you of my love for you. And on that night that he was betrayed, on the night that he was handed over, Jesus had a meal with his friends. And he took a loaf of bread, I suspect much bigger than this. And after giving thanks to God, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and he said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. I will not eat this meal again with you until 
I come back, which made no sense at the moment. But it did make sense that every time we took bread, we would remember. And then he took a cup of wine, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this. This cup, this is the blood of a new covenant which is shed for many and for you. This is going to be for the forgiveness of your sins. Whenever you drink it, remember me. Today, in honor of Jesus, we want to remember. What a fitting way when we don't understand to remember the love that he gave, the stories that each of us have. In a minute, we're going to sing together. And at the end of the song, I'm going to invite each of you to come to the front and receive the elements of communion. Elements that Jesus shared with his disciples that night. But before we sing, I'm going to pray. And then I would ask that as you take the elements, if you would take them back, to your seat and then we will all remember together. God, our creator, thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, whose love pursues us our whole life long. Thank you, Jesus, for giving your life to us in word and deed, even unto death, even death on a cross. Come, Holy Spirit, feed us with your love that we may be filled with power to love God with all our hearts and souls and minds. Amen. Let's stand as we sing.
you know, in the middle of the sadness and the grief, my heart still speaks hope. I don't believe that the story of Jesus is finished yet. I think there is more yet to come. But in this moment, may we remember his words by saying, do this in remembrance of me. His body given for you. May we partake together. And the cruelness of the cross. He said, My blood is a new covenant. As often as you drink it, remember me. Let us remember together. I guess in so many ways, this concludes the funeral of Jesus. We have one more song for you, and I'm gonna ask that you just sit quietly, that you listen to the words, and then as you depart or leave the sanctuary, I ask that you do it in the respect of quietness, that we remember our friend, Jesus Christ. my feet It's okay if it's hard to believe I have faith you will do greater things It's my time to go But before I leave Go tell the world about
Amen.